Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Afro Matt Show. I'm your host, um, Afro Matt, and this is episode 117. Wanted to start off by thanking everyone who um, viewed and shared what the last episode. Um, I'm really, really thankful for that. That was awesome. Oh, I mean, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um. But let's get right into this episode. This episode is uh, 117. It's April 25th. My cat's making noise in the background. That's great. Keeping it professional, I see. Um, Jesus Christ. Hello? Chaos. All the time. Chaos with these guys. Can we keep it professional around here? All right, let's start up with the news. And this one might be a little bit of a shorter episode, but hey, I, I actually kind of enjoy the shorter episodes. Easier to listen to, uh, faster to upload, and um, less space on my computer. Um, but if you guys want them to go longer, let me know in the comments. If you if you can withstand an hour and a half of me talking, I'll do it. I mean, I'll talk, I'll talk for that long. All right, let's get this rolling. The news, news time, news, news with Matt, the news, Tucker Carlson leaves Fox, what is up with this, okay, um, what the hell, dude, it's the webpage that I took it from, dude, this is crazy, Carlson, I copy and paste these links, but I guess the censors on MSN took it off. What's next for Tucker Carlson? All right. Uh, so Tucker Carlson, as you know, he is the um, spokesman. I guess he's like the face of Fox News. He's got that one. He's like that one. He's got like he's got that voice that's like, well, if the news would keep up or he's like well if they didn't make the m and m so damn sexy maybe i wouldn't want to bang them all the time now the liberal media won't tell you this but the m and m's are actually very sexy you know how i know they're sexy because i get turned on by them so like he he just like goes off on these crazy tangents he has the wildest takes but Apparently he's like, and I mean, everyone in their everyone's grandparents are watching Tucker. Your parents might not tell you they're watching Tucker Carlson, but they are watching Tucker Carlson. I guarantee it, almost one hundred percent. But um, Fox Corporation, uh, Fox loses fifty million dollars in value after Tucker Carlson's exit. Fox Corporation's worth as a public company has sunk by more, more than $500 million after the media company on Monday announced that it is parting ways with its star host, Tucker Carlson. Raising questions about the future of Fox News and the future of conservative networks' primetime lineup. I'm not... It's interesting. I, I... Doesn't... does Am I crazy or does Disney own both CNN and Fox? Because I'm pretty sure Disney owns both, Right. Disney owns Fox. I, I'm like 90% sure that Disney owns Fox News. Disney Fox merger. This was in 2019. In 2019, um, so in 2019, here's what Disney, uh, here's what Disney owns after the massive Disney Fox merger. This 71.3 billion dollar deal now complete continues a new terrifying era in media consolidation. This was March 20th, 2019. Um, the merger is officially complete. So yeah, I mean, Fo so Disney owns Fox. They own Fox News. They probably own ESPN. Um, what is this? Fox, Fox Corp still is, exists independent, but it's primarily a news and sports company no, now, though it still owns Fox TV Network. So, 
Wait, okay, I'm, I'm a little confused. What's left for Murdoch are his many, many publications, the Wall Street Journal, Journal among them as part of the company News Corp and the various holdings of Fox News, including Fox Sports News. That was the last time. Uh, Disney already owns ABC, although that, neither it's here nor there, but I do find this interesting. Former House Speaker Ron, Rand Paul is now on the company board of directors. Interesting. Paul Ryan. <clears throat> um. So I mean, I, yeah, I don't really care. But does Disney own CNN? Is the question. Disney own Discovery. Okay, Discovery takes control of HBO, CNN, and Warner Brothers, creating a new media giant. Jesus. Every company Disney owns a map to Disney owning. Holy fuck. Sh holy shit. Dude, this map is is insanely huge. ESPN, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, ESPN, all of ESPN, Disney Services, Hulu, uh, GoPro, Jesus, uh, Hulu, UTV, I don't know what that is, Walt the Disney World, Marvel, of course, Marvel, Disney, uh, FX, 20th Century Fox, Fox Sports, Fox Star Studios, Fox Life, Fox Soccer, Fox, Fox, 20th Century Fox Television. So I, I, I assume they own the news, right? They own Fox News. And I'm pretty sure, and, and don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure Disney now owns porn, like Pornhub. Disney owns Porn hub. Disney executives pleaded to announce acquisition of Pornhub. Did okay, so this is Snopes, and we all know Snopes is the best at fact checking everything. Um, did Disney acquire Pornhub? Liably s labeled as satire, it's difficult to summarize the wide ranging, ever expanding, and practically nonsensical QAnon conspiracy theory. For whatever purposes of this article, readers should know that no one. Main tenets of QAnon. So when did this turn into a QAnon thing? What? Okay. Okay, wait, wait. What? Okay, this is crazy. Snopes, what are you talking about? Okay. For the purposes of this article, readers should know that one of the main tenets of QAnon revolves around the claims that liberals, Hollywood celebrities, and various world leaders are involved in global pe pedophile ring, a la Pizzagate. It is, why do people still t say that this is a con is a conspiracy? It has been actually proven that there is an actual island that actual world elites go to to uh, commit these these actions these acts. Why why Snopes Snopes Jesus Christ. Snopes needs to get it together. I mean, it's not a conspiracy anymore. They need to shut the hell up. With this in mind, it's perhaps not too surprising that supporters of this conspiracy theory have taken it. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. I mean, whatever. Maybe, maybe, maybe they don't own Pornhub, but who cares? I mean, could be, could be true. I mean, they could. The fact that they can't even say that it's not. It, it's. I don't know. Let, let's continue here. But I, I, that, Tucker Carlson leaving Fox is big news. I don't know what he's going to do. He's probably going to go on. He's gonna, probably going to maybe he'll go on Rumble or something. No, he'll get picked up somewhere. He's too good of a he's too good of a speaker. He has he's too eloquent. I mean, what he says. Look, granted, what he says is crazy, but he says it well. That's why he's paid so much money. Like, you might not agree with what he says, and people are like, and I saw Tim Dillon tweet this. He said, you know, the the opposition of Tucker Carl Carlson would say, hey, look at how this guy's just spewing nonsense, and he, he sounds so stupid. But then when you actually watch him, you're like, well, this guy, he's he doesn't really sound even that stupid. He actually sounds pretty 
put together. Like he sounds all there. Um, and that kind of just didn't fit the narrative. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting. I don't know where he's going to go. I I assume he'll probably just start his own thing, kind of like Alex Jones, probably pay for like a Patreon or maybe go live on YouTube. That would be interesting. Tucker Carlson, the new YouTube mogul. <clears throat> All right, let's go into the new one. Uh, oh, this is a follow-up on the last episode of Bush uh, Bud Light Root Beer. Uh, last time we talked, you may remember that Bud Light got not even a new spokesperson. Just they sent one can to a trans person with their face on it, and everyone got so pissed. <laughs> God, they like they may have alienated half of their entire no a hundred percent i said this last time the venn diagram of people that are trans right act activists or trans supporting in general and that drink bud light do not overlap at all so this was like a major oversight and um it seems to be corrected two executives at anheuser-busch have been placed on leave after the company sponsored those instagram posts of dylan mulvaney who is a transgender influencer uh who has millions of followers on instagram and tiktok so after these posts kid rock the musician posted a video of himself shooting cases of <laughs> and as i said many on the right called for a boycott of the company uh, including oh my governor God. Kid uh, rock. desantis was critical as well so so governor well, what do you think were these calls for a boycott of, of Bud Light coming from the right warranted? Well, if we step back and, and we just clearly recognize that the world of ESG uh, has gone way out of bounds from its ESG? original idea. I mean, originally, uh, ESG was focused on having sound environmental policies that are good for the environment and good for companies, ha having a recognition that a diverse thought uh, team built in order to represent is is he is he answering a different question live on air? And the best problem solving was good and having world class governance. That's what ESG was. And it is it is migrated so deep out of bounds that we do see that companies by taking social positions are isolating, <laughs> if if not damaging uh, their customers and their brand. And so this is just the reality. And if and if we could just step back and get ESG back in the box where it belongs and and not forcing people to make yep. a statement about the product they buy and whether they agree with it or don't. People just want to buy products that are solid products that give them great services. They want to be able to visit theme parks without making without making a statement. And I think this is a big moment. I don't know what ESG means. I, I need so like I need a boomer now that now boomers have their own like what are those called uh monograms or um anagrams what are those called the like collection of words i i don't know why i'm spacing on that right now but i need i need my own for like boomers there was like watch out for your kid texting this um like oh ASL. What does that mean? Watch out if your kid's texting ASL. That means age, sex, location. They're trying to get banged out right now. But like, so they would send these things out to the parents. And they'd be like, hey, watch your kids. Don't watch, don't let them text this. Let me see feet. L-M-S-F. Don't let them send L-S L-M-S-F. <laughs> that means he wants to see feet. You know, like they send out these things like keep an eye out on your kids texting this. These, these are what these um i don't know why it, it's not a monogram monograms for names it's whatever i'm i'm functionally retarded okay i i should have come out on the top of the podcast and let everyone know that but um i'm i'm never going to i'm never going to think of it and i know you guys are like screaming probably screaming in your car oh it's this word it's this word i know I've, I listen to my pod. I listen to podcasts. I know that it's frustrating right now, and we're gonna we're gonna alleviate it right now. Word for uh, letters representing words. Okay, that's palindromes. Anagram. Wait, what is it? Anagram. Wait, is that anagram? No, I, I feel like an anagram is palindrome 
lipograph, rebus. What the hell are these words? Anagram formed by rearranging letters. Nope, it's not that. I knew it wasn't that. Okay, let, let me see. L M F A O is a what? I'm this is crazy. Okay, it's a band. Great. Okay. Lamal. L O L is what? What? Okay. L M uh, L O L is one of the most slang electronic communication terms. Can Can I get someone to tell me what this is? It is a Grammarly. Do not let me down. Do not let me down. Laughing out loud. Okay, yeah. An acronym. Oh, th thank you. Jesus Christ. I hate myself. It's an acronym. It's an acronym for... I need... Okay, I need a list of acronyms for old people. Like... Like ESG. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Mag M A G A. They are Watch solid out. products. They give them great services. They want to be able to visit theme parks without making without making a statement. And yeah, I don't know what this guy's talking about, but Anheuser Anheuser Busch fired their two two execs after the transgender backlash. They're on leave. I guess they'll probably be back, but after it all blows over, huh? Let's see. Um, let's continue some. some uh, this is actually kind of interesting news. Um, DoorDash. Gig economy. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna continue to say random words that'll make us uh, rank in the uh, the algorithm. Gig economy. Uh, DoorDash Plus. Guac Guac Squad. If you're if you shop at Chipotle enough, I think you become part of the Guac Squad. <laughs> I don't know if that shows up in the on six okay. dangerous delivery. A young South Florida couple hearing and fearing for their life after they say someone shot at them while they were delivering groceries. <laughs> they say they ended up at the wrong address, and that's when Jesus someone Christ. at that home opened fire. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Chris Hosh. And I'm Trina Robinson. Nico Clemens is live at the Davie Police Department with the exclusive story tonight. Nico. Uh, just terrifying for this couple. They, they say they were driving for Instacart, trying to find the home they were supposed to deliver Instacart to. And, and out of nowhere, shot bullets up. started. So, Do DoorDashers, Instacart, Inst they are the front lines of service workers right now. They are actively this person acts actively got shot up on their way to deliver this uh, honestly they probably still had to deliver it they probably had to like they they like okay yeah we just survived being shot at now we have to go find the actual location that this is sorry we ended up in the wrong place there's no way that instacart has any sort of insurance policy or anything like if your car gets shot up, you're entirely responsible for it. All damages, including gunfire. I 100% that's that is in the terms of service that you accept. In the in the case of extreme gunfire, you are responsible for all damages. Instacart does not cost is not liable to pay out any insurance policies. 100% that's in it. But I mean, th this is a wild story. Getting shot up on the front lines of delivery service. Whew. Um. So, an interesting part of this too is that the person who shot at them technically did nothing legal. Legal. So, um, a detective asked if we wanted to prosecute, and we agreed to do that. But he said, since since they didn't break any laws or do anything unlawful, that they couldn't do anything because we were on their property. Isn't that crazy? You show up to someone's home. Hey, I'm just delivering. I'm delivering Instacart. I'm, imagine if it was just like one thing of like anal cream. You're delivering one thing of anal cream for, as Instacart from Walgreens. You're just trying to bring it to the house. You're laying it down. You look at the guy. You look, you're like walking in the thing and then you're getting 
pop, 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 pop. Just fully unloaded. <laughs> it's wild. You think he does that to like everyone? That guy, that guy in that house probably has ops. That guy's definitely got ops. He's got people that are out to get him, and he doesn't want anyone on his lawn. First person, he's shooting. He might be shooting at every every person that comes on his lawn. I don't know how that's not illegal, but I mean, what state was this in? Florida. Yeah, I think it was Florida. Wait, look, did they say in the beginning? Only on six. Dangerous delivery. A young South Florida couple here. Yep. South Florida. How did I know it? How did I know it? South Florida. Of course. Hey, deliver it. Hey, deliver in South Florida at your own risk. Here's another DoorDash story from yesterday. I, I got a lot of DoorDash stories. These are interesting. DoorDash asks driver's wife to complete order after he is rushed to the ER. Love that. A woman has shared how she was asked to complete her husband's DoorDash order despite him being in the emergency room. DoorDash is a U.S.-based online ordering food ordering platform that connects customers with local restaurants. Blah, 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 blah. When Miranda's husband got into the car accident while working his DoorDash job, she was shocked by the company's reaction. On April 15th, the Texas-based DoorDasher got into a car accident while working and was rushed to the hospital. I was running my through my shift when I felt my phone go off. I thought it was my boss calling me, but it um, but when the store phone rang, my coworker handed it to me saying it's urgent. On the other end of the phone, Miranda was told was her husband had been in a car, uh, was told that her husband had been in a car accident. He was okay, but the car was completely destroyed. After arranging cover for her own for her own job, of course, of course she had to arrange cover for her job. She couldn't just leave in an emergency. God, what a hellscape! What a hellscape! So she's like, "Hey guys, hey hey Samantha, thanks for letting me know. My husband just got into a car accident. Um, I'm gonna make some calls. I'll get my shift covered. I promise. Um, instead of just leaving immediately. God, what a hell! What a hell!" Not what the hell, what a hell we live in. She got a ride to the hospital. I was so stressed because even though I was told he seemed fine, I wanted to see for myself to make sure. I cried so much because I was worried about him. Seeing him on the stretcher made me break even more. That's sad. Thankfully, none of the people involved, involved in the accident were seriously hurt. While a couple were waiting for the doctor, he realized that DoorDash order was still in progress. He freaked out. He tried canceling it, but all over again, Placey didn't know what to do. I tried. <laughs> oh, my God. He got more freaked out by the DoorDash order. Like, so my girlfriend DoorDashes and she, you have to maintain a certain amount of like acceptance rate or it, God forbid, if you don't deliver, if you don't deliver the, the item, uh, you might not DoorDash again. So this guy was worried that he was going to, not only was he in a car accident, but he was worried he was going to lose his job because of it. So he tried canceling it, um, but he was all over the place and he didn't know what to do. I tried helping and accidentally called the customer and, um, and I let her know anyways what happened. I found a contact support button and it gave me a bot. And after clicking the option to cancel, it said that um, I was connected to an agent. In the screenshot of the conversation, Miranda told the DoorDash support worker that her husband was in the emergency room. The service, the support worker replied, too bad to know about that situation. Will you be able to complete the order? <laughs> oh, my God. And you know, this person is just some Indian responding to messages like some tech, like there's a room full of these people and they just say, hey, no matter what they respond to, hey. Just ask, are you going to complete the order? Are you going to complete the order? Are, the, everyone comes into the office and they all just chant, are you going to complete the order? Are you going to complete the order? All right, guys, get out there. And then every text that they get, they say, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you going to complete the order? Right? God, this is so sad. Honestly, I let out a laugh and asked if I if I could deliver the food. I showed my husband and it cheered him up. It was funny, like, funnily enough. She said, honestly... It didn't surprise me, but at the same time, my husband and I both said, are you fucking for real? Kind of thought in our head. The a DoorDash spokesperson told Newsweek, this interaction with our support team falls below the high standards we set for ourselves. <laughs> uh, we, we take these matters 
seriously and are urgently investigating. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. They might have just... DoorDash might as well just have farted into the microphone. Hey, DoorDash, we have a comment. Um, we'd like to, you to comment on this uh, screenshot here. There's a couple that got into a car accident, and they talked to your support team, and they said to complete the order. Um, what is your response? Thank you very much, DoorDash. The, the DoorDash executives, and you, and you realize this when you start talking to people that are in, like, executive positions— their, their number one skill and the reason they get paid so much, especially for these people that answer these sort of questions, is because they are very good at saying absolutely nothing. Look at this guy. This is what he said. The interaction with our support team falls below the high standards that we set for ourselves. Okay, what standards? It's high to them. What are the standards? High is very subjective. High for DoorDash could be, hey, at least you got to reply. That's our high standards. We reply to everyone. That's not uh, that's not a high sca standard for me, especially during a distressing and scary time. OK. We take these matters seriously and are urgently investigating. OK. Absolutely nothing was said by the DoorDash per, uh, spokesperson. Jesus Christ. Here's the screenshot. Here's a here's the screenshot taken at 7:33. I'm his wife. He got into a car wreck and is in the emergency room. Customer knows. I didn't know how to cancel. Too bad to know about the situation. Will you be able to complete the or order? She responds, "My husband is in the emergency room." No. <laughs> this is so crazy. You know, I think I think that like maybe in the future this is like it's funny now but maybe in the future she won't have an option but to complete it like he'll be con he'll be like contractually obligated to complete the order no matter what so it's like hey if you if you get into a car this has to be completed or um you know we'll we'll take your left hand they'll they'll come and they'll take your left hand they'll slit your tires some DoorDash executive of course, it'll probably all be owned by Disney then, but Disney DoorDash. <laughs> they make a TV show to DoorDash to prepare people for their the hell of a job that they'll work. The hell. The absolute hell of a life that it is. Constantly having to rely on other people f to order. And it's just like selling your time i mean i actually it's not that bad i mean i don't know why i i don't know why i say it's that bad it's it's not it's honestly not that bad i mean if, if you're willing to put a lot of miles on your car do it do, go doordash do it get into a car accident and um get get fired immediately i want to know if this guy still has a job though that that that's why that's my main concern let's see <clears throat> let's continue right along here Paris, okay, yeah, I wanted to check back in on Paris because I didn't do this. So Paris, as you know, they are protesting. Maybe you don't know, actually. Maybe you don't know. I won't assume. They're they're protesting because of their pensions. So they say it's what they're protesting. But if they're protesting for their pension, why are French protesters storming BlackRock's office in Paris? Why are they doing that? If it's only about pensions, and that's what our government wants you to wants you to think, hey guys, hey, these people are mad about pensions. Yeah, I would be mad about pensions too, or um, whatever. Their pension reform, but is this really just about pension reform, or is this goes does this go much deeper? And I assume that it does if they're storming the Black Rock building in Paris. First off, I don't know how they didn't get mowed down by paramilitary. Like private pri private police guarding BlackRock. I imagine BlackRock is um, first off probably hard to get into. The number one, I, maybe number two besides Vanguard hedge fund organization, they own significant por portions of almost every company. Members of the BlackRock board. Uh, have their pockets deep, deep into politics, which is always got to love that. I think that the founding fathers should have probably, instead of saying, hey, there should be a separation of church and state, they should have 
made it specifics of business and state because so it, i mean it's like a just a ouroboros of the, just like it's just auto fellatio black rock giving money to whatever whichever politician will take their money to you know, maybe they give them a higher higher yield on their bonds returns or something, or maybe they pay out dividends more. Some way that they can legally bl- bribe these people, and then they just slowly get, you know, bills passed that say, "Hey, BlackRock, hey, buy up entire blocks of rural Texas farmland, build as many homes on it as you want, and then rent those homes for extortionarily high prices." Hey, hey, BlackRock, how about when the market crashes, which we will crash the market. So this is the government. I'm the government talking to BlackRock. Hey, BlackRock. Hey, the market's going to crash. This is when we think it's going to crash. Start taking out some of your assets. Get cash liquid. Once it crashes, hey, buy up all the properties. We want every U.S. citizen living in a rental hellscape where owning property is impossible. BlackRock, hey, BlackRock, hey, hey, Vanguard, hey, get in here. Hey, group huddle, group huddle, guys. Here's what's, here's the plan. Slowly you buy up all the real estate. Then you set the prices through Zillow and Zillow estimates and whatnot. Raise the comps of all the homes around it. We will pump the entire market and then, hey, BlackRock, dump it. Now BlackRock, now dump it. Now, BlackRock, buy at the new low. And now you now own the single, you are now the largest single owner of property in the United States. What do you want to do with all that land, BlackRock? Oh, you want to build shitty little brick or like white houses that look like, you want to build pods? Hey, hey, BlackRock, hey, what do you want to do with all that land? Oh, you want to build 5 billion pods for people to live in? Okay, that sounds really, really cool, actually. Oh, you're going to rent out a pod for 500 a square foot? That sounds sounds a little much, but hey, you do you, BlackRock. Oh, oh, what's that, BlackRock? You own every home in downtown Houston. Okay, never mind. So you so you can so you can just name the price and you just own everything. Sounds cool. BlackRock responds. Oh, I I don't own everything. Hey, Vanguard owns the other half. Uh, And then they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but we'll get together and we'll we'll set some prices here. Slowly, look, that's an exaggeration, but it will happen. Not in my lifetime. Hopefully not in my lifetime. I mean, I probably maybe will not buy a home. I think like right now maybe it's the last time you'll be able to buy the home. If the market crashes again, like another 07 crash, the amount of equity available to these companies are thousands of times greater than they had back in 07. The amount of land that these people planned to buy up, these they will buy so much of the American soil that BlackRock already owns a significant portion of U.S. companies. They own like 5% of Facebook. They own 10% of Amazon. They own significant port it's not that much it's probably like five percent two percent but i mean these are big percentages of huge companies so they have people on the board they probably have there's a hundred people on the board or whatever and they own two percent they have two people on the board they have a lot of money at their disposal you like we're talking huge huge money this is a multi blackrock to put this into perspective blackrock has more money at its disposal than every single country except for four. They have more money than the GDP of like all but four countries. I'm pretty sure. Maybe, let's see, BlackRock. BlackRock versus GDP. It has a $15 trillion fund at its disposal. The world's largest asset manager. I mean, with $15 trillion, I mean, that is just retarded money. It's retarded money. So much money. 
the U.S. debt is like thirty trillion dollars. They have half. They just have half of the U.S. debt as assets spread across assets. Now they're slowly gonna. Now, so now they have assets in companies. They're going to slowly buy up assets of the actual land that we live on. But let's continue. So the French protesters stormed BlackRock's office, BlackRock's office in Paris today. This was as of uh, the sixth, so a little bit late. But Paris remains in the grip of a large-scale protest following government pension reform. Protesters on Thursday briefly left the streets and forced their way into a building of offices offices of asset manager Black BlackRock, according to reporters from Reuters, which also has an office in the same building. Videos show dozens of protesters entering the office building, holding flares, shooting off fireworks, and chanting. Protesters significantly uh, specifically targeted BlackRock's office due to the company's role in managing and privatizing pre- pensions. Great. So now they have a control of pensions as well, which is which are at the heart of the French government's recent reforms. Further reporting from CNN says that, and I'm going to talk like Carlson now, further reporting from CNN says that while protesters did manage to enter the building's main floor, BlackRock's office is on the third floor and was not breached. All told, protesters were in the building for around 10 minutes. A spokesperson from BlackRock declined to comment. Yeah, BlackRock, of course. Of course they didn't. Why would BlackRock comment on anything? They own everything. They're only going to comment on any... This this might be a good litmus test, too. Anything that BlackRock comments on, comments on is something that they probably own. They probably own a major share of whatever news broadcast that is, and they're commenting, and, and they're like, hey, yeah, if if I don't like what they're printing, I'll just... I'll burn. I'll burn you. And I've had some people say, because they're because I talk about BlackRock sometimes, and they're like, "Well, BlackRock's not just some; it's not some evil, dark manipulator, um, whatever. You know, it's not operating from the shadow. It's just trying to make its investors money, man." And I'm like, "Yes, yeah, that's that is true. A apt, apt um, observation there. That is a very smart, but um, like." like why why are they investing so much money into all these things like it all just boils down to it's a lot it's a lot and why are they buying up so much land what are they planning to do with the land they're just investing in property man all right man don't come crying to me when they when you can't buy a home ever like ever Our, our like our entire economy hinges on it's on it's it's on the verge um continuing uh this is not even fun this is not even fun continuing claims of up to 22% um so what is what is this the predicted unemployment rate is at 22% right now interesting i didn't mean to click on that extra link let's see paris raid american retail let's see what's going on in this oh we might be moving on to tiktok time tiktok time oh this is fun this is really fun this is a great tiktok okay well, let's get the tiktok video going do i have the do i have an audio for tiktok time i don't think i do is this the one that i play which one, what's the one that i usually play for tiktoks Oh. Oh. TikTok time. We're going to get goofy. All right. Here we go. This is store clerk passes out. Customers rob store instead of helping him. This is classic. Classic shenanigans going on. In the 7-Eleven, this looks like some sort of gas station. Here we go. Here we go. The store clerk passes out. Ooh. Store clerk pot passes out into some... Goes head first into some smart water here. He's passed out. Now they're like... They're checking on him. They're like, hey, man. Oh, yeah. He's passed out. So they took some money from his wallet. And 
now they are opening the cash register. Now he's jumping back behind the counter. His, his, uh, his co-conspirator has left at this point. It looks like he grabbed maybe some, uh, some new ports or something. Oh, his home, his, my bad. His friend has come in and his friend's checking the, uh, oh, whoa. Dude, his friend knew how to operate the cash register. That's actually crazy. So, so he popped open the cash register. Now they're stealing all the cash. Now, do they know to check underneath the cash register? He does. Wow. That's where they keep the big bills. Smart, man. Smart. So that guy was definitely a cash cashier at one point. So they, uh, so yeah, instead of helping, <clears throat> now, now I may have, so if you're just listening, that, though, that was three white men. That may not, and if you, if you were thinking that they weren't, then you're racist. That's like that classic, um, that classic story or what's, what's that joke? It's like a man goes to the dentist. Um, uh, what is it? A man goes to the dentist or, or whatever. And then the doctor, the doctor is his, is his wife or something. Oh no. Oh, wait, wait. Um, I don't know. It's like it's something about a, a it's the the punchline of the joke is that no one ever thinks that it's the it's a it's a female doctor or um <laughs> I don't I I don't know. I think it's like some kid gets injured or whatever and um the the dad is whatever dead or and I I don't I don't know. I don't know where the story the joke is but I don't have it. I don't have it. My bad, guys. Look it up. Let me see. Joke about female doctor. This might get interesting, actually. This might we might get into some territory here. The 13 best female doctor jokes. <laughs> At a medical convention, a male doctor and a female doctor or start eyeing each other. The male doctor asks her to dinner and he accepts. As they sit down at the restaurant, she excuses herself and goes to wash her hands. After dinner, one thing leads to another and end up in a hotel bedroom. Just as things get hot, the female doctor interrupts and says he has to go wash his hands, uh, her hands. Once she comes back, they go for it. After the sex session, what is this? She gets up and says uh, she's going to go wash her hands. As she comes back, she says, I bet uh, the male doctor says, I bet you're a surgeon. She confirms and asks how he knew. Easy. You're always washing your hands. Um, he said, and then she says, I bet you're an anesthesio uh, anesthesiologist. She said, wow. How? He says, well, how did you guess? She said, easy. I didn't feel a thing. That's pretty funny. Uh, classic, classic women jokes. All right, let's continue with TikTok time here. <clears throat> All right, this is uh oh, well, more robberies. So I've been I like TikTok has been showing me a lot of robberies. I don't know if like, I think this all stems from Chicago. Okay. Chicago is like completely in uh, disarray. It is Gotham City. TikTok or I mean, uh, Chicago's tick has gone completely. Sh Gotham City. They need a Batman bad. They need a Batman bad. But here are shoplifters stealing behind the counter in broad daylight. No one cares. I mean, wild shenanigans. All of the nicotine. All the nicotine. Got to get that nicotine, you know. So they're just like, like, they look like they're doing an Easter egg hunt. You know how kind of like, like when an adult does an Easter egg hunt, they don't sprint. They're just kind of like walk quick. Like you don't want to look like you want candy that bad but hey you still want the egg you still want to find the egg so they're just kind of like briskly walking around this place just stealing shit also on aisle one 
also an aisle. So this guy, this guy works at this is probably this looks like a um, a Walgreens and this or a CVS or something. And this guy just like hate he get, probably gets paid ten dollars an hour, hates his life. This is what he has to deal with probably on a daily basis or a semi daily basis. Code ninety nine. Code ninety nine. Code ninety nine. I get this all the time. Yeah. Damn. Of course the Asian people are paying for their items because I they uh, never mind. Just an observation. <coughs> now they're just they're just like leisurely walking out of the store as if they just like classic day. Get a job. Get a job. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Get, imagine telling someone to get a job after they rob your store and then they tell you you're a piece of shit. Get a job. <laughs> you racist piece of shit. I hope you die. I hope you die for telling that person to get a job after they robbed you. Piece of shit. All right, let's continue. This guy's cra this guy's absolutely crazy. So I think we featured this guy before on the podcast, and he gets these people out of the most ridiculous crimes known to man. He releases demons onto the street. Like, who's the best lawyer? The Alma. And why am I the best lawyer? Got my case dismissed. And uh, what were you charged with? I sold on a pregnant person. And uh, how much prison time are you looking at? Ten years. Wait, wait, wait. He what? He ran over a pregnant person. A pregnant person. And got my case dismissed. And uh, what were you charged with? Assault on a pregnant person. Assault on a pregnant person. And uh, how much prison time? Dude, he's left? so happy. The the lawyer is so happy he got this person off. This guy is the real Saul Goodman. Looking at ten years, bro. Uh, what did they accuse you of doing? Punching and slapping my baby mama. Okay. Punching and, and slapping um, my baby yeah, mama. <laughs> he definitely yeah. did that shit. All right. And is there? Any wait, wait. Did he say hell yeah, hell fucking yeah? I did that shit. Okay. And um, are you happy with the results? Hell fucking yeah. All right. And is there anything else you want to add? This guy definitely. Man, did. hire this man, bro. <laughs> Good at hire this man. Dude, this guy's getting people off with light work. This guy got. What, what? He didn't even get a prison sentence. He got community what did they service. What you of doing? Punching and slapping my baby mama. Punching okay. and slapping my and, baby um, mama. Are you happy with the results? Hell fucking. And uh, what were you charged with? Best lawyer. The alma. And why am I the best lawyer? Got my case dismissed. And uh, what were you charged with? Case Assault dismissed. Assault on a pregnant person. And uh, how much prison time are you looking at? So this guy went from 10 years. Th this is actually this is actually like the best sort of advertisement I think a lawyer can do. Because this, this, this is like proof that this guy means business. He got this guy. So he punched and slapped his baby mama. Which he definitely did. He definitely did. I'm not. <laughs> he definitely did. I don't think that's up for debate, okay? But he definitely did that shit. <laughs> so he went from 10 years of prison, prison sentence, to case dismissed. Wild. Here's another one. This guy gets, this guy releases, the releases beast All right, back I'm into right the streets. This is crazy. This guy's out here. All right, I'm right outside of court with my great client here. Uh, look, this, this is a different guy, actually. I guess I ended up on a weird side of TikTok. This guy's uh, Panda Panda P Firm 202. This was not an easy one. The police pulled her over for speeding on the freeway. They got her going 88 on the freeway. Uh, 88. They, 88's not that bad. 88's not that bad. 88 on a 75, that's a little bit fast. That's 13 over. Usually they start pulling you over at around 10 over. And then you're looking at trouble at 15 over. <laughs> Jesus. Let's continue. So 88's a little fast, but let's see what happens. On the freeway, uh, they smelled alcohol. Oh. She did a breathalyzer test, came back 0 0.12. 0 0.12. Blood alcohol content. Uh, you know, and she is on her way to become a nurse. A this nurse. This case could have been extremely damaging to her career. But I'm proud to, proud to announce that after working really hard on this case, we finally got a reckless driving DUI dismissed. 
point reckless one driving two. one year of probation and then we can expunge it off her record how are you feeling great thank you so much she's definitely All right, doing that you shit. happy that you can uh, go to nursing school yes Finish my dreams. <laughs> Finish right. my dreams. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Another demon released back onto the streets. I mean, what in the world? Hey, little Ben. These cats are all over the place. All right. Let's watch one more. This is Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg's entering like a demon. He's entering his um, DJ Khaled phase. Here we go. God, those th those lawyer videos are so crazy. This man was caught stealing, and uh, he brutally assaulted 15 police officers. He the, He's releasing GTA characters back onto the streets. Like, these are GTA characters. This guy shot a bazooka, killed 15, ran over six, case dismissed. Here's Mark Wahlberg. Oh, I know East has already passed. East but you gotta stay prayed up every day. Stay prayed up. Stay every prayed day. up. Stay on the hallow out. He's so drippy. So drippy. Mark what a Wahlberg's way to start the day. Crazy. Already got the gym done. About to get our daily prayer time. Daily prayer time. God is good. Stay prayed up. God is good. And now he's just gonna pose here and stare at the sunset. Mark Wahlberg's on some like drippy shit right now. He's on that new wave. Okay, one last video. This is the FBI labeling words as documents reveal extremists. a list of commonly used words online that the FBI has labeled extremism. This after a four first off, this podcast clearly marked as extremists at, based off of these words. I mean, literally, I just said one FOIA request. It's a freedom of information request from the Heritage Foundation. The phrase red pill made red famous pilled. by the Matrix <laughs> is a belief that society is corrupt and people are victims of that corruption. True. The word based, based, just based, according to the FBI, refers to someone, quote, who has been converted to <laughs> racist ideology. And then there's this one, LARPing. Uh, LARPing. It originally refers to groups doing live auction, uh, live action role play. Live action role now plays. it's a way to, quote, deride individuals accused of not being as extreme. These are the words that the FBI. I have heard people say that January 6th was pretty much LARPing has indicated are in the extreme. I mean, it was. I mean, people were out there in horns and shit, but all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this, uh, I guess, extremist podcast. Um, if you enjoyed it, please share with a friend. Bye. Oh, shit. Wh which one is it? There it is. Thanks for listening.